Why hello everyone, this is Sol with some more Shadowlands Alpha coverage. And today we're going to be covering Professions yet again. I covered this a good while back, very early in the Alpha. I went through all the Professions and I gave my very fresh and unfiltered impressions uh, while not noticing certain things like, oh, where did the bags go? And I didn't really notice that while noticing other things like attachments to armor and other such things. Well, we're back and we're going to once again pretty much do the same thing as a follow-up. Now what happened in this particular Shadowlands Alpha build is that alongside this build, Blizzard issued a statement saying, hey, you know what? Professions are testable now. Check them out. Let us know what you think. And so here we are. Now I'm here in Orbos and I'm in this big old crafting hall, which uh, pretty much goes over all the professions in this very hall. So I, we can expect this particular area to be pretty busy. I think it'd be pretty cool to see a bunch of people running up and down the halls, uh, going to vendors and trading things and meeting up and that sort of thing. So that part's really cool. Um, and again, what I'm going to do is go down this hall, go through the professions, and from there do a quick analysis of just what's going on, uh, what seems to have changed from the last time we've looked at it, and well, basically, is this going to be fun and are we going to get rich? So first off, I'm going to open up my uh, profession tab and you see I already learned uh, mining and skinning for the sake of explaining uh, a couple of things to you right off the bat. So if I open up my mining skills, I did in fact learn Shadowlands Mining and the only thing that I haven't learned is this uh, Lithium Ore. I just need to have a certain skill level and then I can buy it and then cool I can smelt Lithium Ore into something usable that other professions can, a uh, lot like blacksmiths can use to take advantage uh, to build stuff and then hawk their wares. You'll notice that there's no stars here. There's no stars up here, unlike Zandalari mining and other such thing. You have ranks that enhance how many materials you get and whatnot. Something that we're used to after so many years. Well, that's gone. In fact, that's also gone in uh, skinning. I don't see that here either. And while I obviously don't have the profession, uh, herbalism, same thing. So there are no skill ranks when it comes to gathering professions anymore. So presumably there are also there also may not be any um, any quests or side quests that will later enhance your ability to gather materials. Now again, this is the alpha. Things could be added. Something like this might be missing, even though crafting professions are testable. Perhaps gathering professions they still need a little bit more work, or there are there is still room to add things, but. I'm just reporting what we're seeing here. It looks like there's no ranks for gathering at the moment. And we did hear from Blizzard that they removed a lot of ranks from other professions, as you're going to see as we go down the list. One thing that is notable about mining though is that, as you can see here in the Unlearn tab, I'm sorry, in the Learn tab, smelting is back. So we are gonna go back to a smelt and take care of all these materials. And also there are one, two, three, four, five different kinds of ore here, along with a lithium ore afterwards. So you're gonna be hopping around all sorts of, you know, all of these zones in order to get the materials you need in order to craft those things that you wanna make. Now that does mostly make sense to me, considering that each of the zones is considered as its own realm. It would make me a little bit worried if we needed to go to the Maw in order to get certain materials, knowing that there may be some sort of system that only allows us to hang out in the Maw for a limited amount of time, but you know, we're just gonna have to wait and see on that front. And I'm trying to find the archaeology vendor. Yoo-hoo! Archaeology vendor. Well, whatever the case, we're at least gonna take a look at cooking and fishing. Uh, fishing, although there, there's pretty much nothing, so maybe we're still waiting for something to be added here. Maybe it's going to be very, very cut and dry. Uh, but for cooking, this is probably the first profession that we can take a good, honest look at and see what uh, you know, see what we have in store. Now, again, we don't have recipe ranks to work with, and it's more or less all but verified that we're not going to have recipe ranks for these, which already speaks to something. So let's take a look at this. This is one of the big feasts that we're going to get out of this. It requires level 60. So yes, it is definitely uh, the Feast of Shadowlands, and it does require a, a good bit of materials. It requires um, uh, two sets of fish, uh, two sets of meat. Uh, these look like to be... Uh, reagents that you can just buy from a vendor. So you're looking at the, these top four items here. This is still, you know, this is a lot of stuff to make one feast. 
So we're either going to see uh, high scarcity or we're going to see mobs just drop a whole bunch of stuff or there may be ways to perhaps gather more of these materials, maybe if not from crafting, but from other sources. Now let's take a look at the soul food because the soul food is the stuff that gives us like the fun buffs. If you can recall uh, stuff from Legion, these might look familiar to you. Quiet Hounds over here, it gives you a ghostly appearance, which is, you know, cool, not not so great. But Fried Bonefish is like the bear tartar of Shadowlands, which makes you a little bit faster every time you kill an enemy. Seraph Tenders may sound a little bit familiar too, although I don't remember the, the name of the food from Legion. Feel free to comment and correct me on this. Uh, but, the, but, but this is the one that gives you additional, uh, additional healing whenever you're out of combat, so great for Mythic Plus. Uh, and then the Smothered Skank, wow, I said that. I'm not going to edit that out. The Smothered Shank <laughs> is the basically the DPS food. Um, I'm sure th there are, of course, going to be foods that give you stats, like Mastery and, and what have you, or more Mastery. I mean, these stats look really small. 7 Mastery, 5 Haste. Let's not worry about the numbers too much. Uh, but otherwise, apart from the Soul Food, the Light, Large, and the Feasts, that's pretty much it. It's really simplified food. Um, all the fun is put into the soul food, to be honest. And then otherwise, it's just whatever stat works for you best. If you're going to be doing a raid um, or a uh, high level mythic dungeon or even Torghast. And you don't want to worry about, uh, you don't want to go through the trouble of getting uh, this food together. Because it looks like these uh, bits might be a little bit harder to get together. So let's finally take a look at the major profession, starting with enchanting and starting with the abilities that we get right off the bat and in this case it's not so bad and you know for this one we get an enchant that makes us move a little bit faster after killing an enemy i'm not quite sure if this is the same speed as the bear tartar like food that i mentioned earlier but it's a nice thing to start off with to make a little bit of money and for all we know it may be useful all throughout uh, all throughout shadowlands unless there are more cool things and we might find that out in just a bit Restorative Binding will give us a little bit of a heal after killing an enemy, and these attach to, uh, looks like, Bracers. Nice. And then these are the Shadowlands Crafting Gloves, which I'm sure everyone's going to pick up at least early on. So as I mentioned way back, it sort of looks as if we can enchant all sorts of different uh, slots with these enchants. However, only certain stats are being applied to these enchants. So for example, with Boots, these apply either Agility or more agility. So a cloth wear and a plate wear, they're not going to be using these enchants at all. However, a leather person and a male person will. By contrast, classes that use intelligence, they're going to be putting on these bracer enchants that only give you intelligence. And finally here, gloves are going to provide various amounts of strength. So it's going to be a little bit weird, but not so weird for hybrid classes. So let's say you're a paladin you and you both tank and heal. So of course I'm going to be using these certain glove enchants for tanking purposes, but I can also go ahead and enchant my bracers with these int uh, with these int enchants without having to worry about oh shucks well I need to like replace a whole set or something like that because yes the intelligence here won't apply while you're in tank spec, but as soon as you change the healing. The gloves won't pro provide you any more meaningful strength that's going to do anything, but it is going to uh, it is going to take advantage of the intelligence that you get from those bracers. So this is an interesting approach. Blizzard is giving us more things to enchant, but it's not forcing players to have all these different slots to enchant for themselves. Meanwhile, for the chest, it's a little bit more interesting. You do have certain kinds of enchants that are clearly designed for casters or for healing or for tanking. But if you do happen to switch spec slot, you can go for just general stats instead. Otherwise, we have the kind of standard fare of what enchanters offer. They're able to enchant rings, they can shatter their items so that you can have a, a wider array of resources. You can do weapon enchants, uh, but let's take a quick glance at these wands because this is going to um, this is going to be a good example of most of the other professions. So I'm not going to go into all these different customizations in full detail. But in this case, we're looking at this enchanted twilight wand, which has an item level of 100 
upgrade, as well as an optional reagent slot. And if we hover over, we, we take a look at this crafter's mark, and what it does is set the item level to 129, and the required item level, I'm sorry, the required level to 53. So right now, it just has a requirement of, of level 50, and an item level of 100. It would bump it up to 129. Item level 120 is the item level that's assigned to pre-made level 57 characters that are that you can make in the alpha to go inside Revendreth. So this gives a little bit of this gives a nice little bit of a bump. You're able to access this higher item level at only level 53. Now here's something very interesting about enchanting that they're able to make certain reagents that are going to be usable for other professions. For example, this enchanted Alethium bar, this is something that blacksmiths use to make high level items, including these legendary base items that I'm going to get into with the other professions. They can also make this desolate hide as well as this silk. So these are going to be required items for, uh, black, for blacksmiths and leather workers and tailors. That's pretty cool. I do like the fact that there's going to be a stronger relationship between the different professions to get more goods flowing from one type of player to another, as well as, of course, gold, shifting hands much more frequently. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at leatherworking and tailoring. They're both armor professions. There are things that are unique about them, but first, let's take a look at what is for the most part, common between all the armor professions, which is creating armor. So reagents are going to be a pretty big thing in Shadowlands. For example, this craftsman's pouch, it's a reagent that leather workers can make. And what it does, it makes the crafted armor have a chance to give an additional skill point when crafting items from the Shadowlands. So it's gonna be a very useful skill to have for people who are trying to level up. Uh, they'll want to pick this thing up so they can affix it to some cheap piece of armor that someone else is making for them or even making for themselves. So that way they're able to level up their professions much more fa much faster and more cost efficient. So here's something that's shared across all the different armor professions and it's these Relic of the Past reagents. Uh, let's look at the high level one and what it does is set the item level to 100 to whatever this is attached to and the, and the required level to 50 which doesn't sound very interesting at first until you go down to really old professions like uh, these black dragon scale boots actually let me look at um some of these more basic uh, items here so like these embossed leather boots which have an item level of eight ooh whoop to do I can add an re I can add a reagent and bump the item level of these embossed level boots all the way up to level 100 and give it a required item and and you know with a with a required level of 50. So it's kind of weird. You're able to take these old professions and suddenly bump them up into something that's feasible and or usable uh, for leveling like right away. And all you need is this relic of the past which looks to not be a very difficult to make item let me find this really quick uh here it is it only takes seven tempest hide to bump to bump whatever old item to something that's more appropriate so it's a it's a interesting and kind of weird way to get things uh to get certain items caught up uh, for the purpose of leveling faster, I suppose. So here are the highest level kinds of leather shoulders that a leather worker can make. And this is apart from the specialized armor, the things that are going to be used for legendaries, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, you can see here it has an item level of 165. Now, over here is the dungeon journal. We're looking at the other side and we're at normal difficulty. And items here have an item level of 170 which sounds like a bummer. It sounds like, oh, these are inferior items, I'm really sad. Until you consider, you can specify the secondary stats to be exactly what you want them to be. In this case, and at least for now, I'm going to assume that these numbers are going to change, I can customize these items to have a 33 of whatever stat I wish for them to like. Unlike the stuff that you get from dungeons, uh, these happen to give uh, you know, somewhat something kind of similar. Let's see. Uh, let me look for. Um, let me do a comparison of. Let's see. These are shoulders. Um, those are boots. Let's try to find some. Let's find treads. Okay. So here are some item level 165 treads. We can hear the stats. We can look. We can either have 33 of whatever stat we want on this crafted gear, or 
we would be looking at uh, just slightly more stats on these item level 170 pieces, but we can't customize them. So very early on, crafting professions are going to be extremely powerful because we're going to be able to stack exactly the kind of stats that we want. And because of that customization, because of that level, we're going to be able to uh, probably, I guess theoretically, we could probably sim better than uh, heroic and higher gear because we're able to customize our secondaries the way that we want to. It's just a matter of the tuning, how much our secondary is going to weigh in to our overall DPS. And also, let's go back to these pauldrons and look at the actual reagents for the items. You need heavy desolate hide, you need gaunt sinew, um, and basically these tooltips that we're looking at, nothing here says soulbound. So it looks like nothing here is bound by materials that you can only get from certain places. So I think this is a tremendous change regarding professions overall because we no longer are bound to or we're no longer forced to go into that raid or into that dungeon or heroic or whatever to get that material that only your character can get. We can get materials from wherever we need to to make virtually everything here with the exception again of legendary gear. At any rate, what else can leather workers do? They can make this comfortable rider's barding, which prevents them from getting dazed um, while mounted. Uh, they can create uh, bows as well as crossbows. Hey, welcome back. And of course you can customize these to a limited level. Let me go over some of the customization, although these do look like placeholders. So I can craft these item level 165s, um, but it's a little bit weird because I, I, I guess you can make this so that you can craft a, a bow that is used at a lower level, perhaps. Although it also decreases the, the power of the bow as well, so it's a little bit counterintuitive. And then we're also, I'm also seeing that, that the differences between the Crafters Mark 3 and 4 is nothing. At first I was thinking, okay, maybe it'll set the item level to 165, but it will lower the requirement to 50 or something like that. So I'm going to write these off as placeholder for right now. They still need some more testing, uh, but it's still pretty cool that you're able to specify the, the kind of secondary stats that you want on your weapons as well. That's pretty darn sweet. The rest of the stuff looks like standard fare. They can make drums as usual, and keep in mind uh, the, the haste buff has been nerfed down to 15%, uh, and so has the actual bloodlust. Uh, it's been toned down just a little bit. And then there's a loosened belt, which increases the duration of well-fed effects. Not bad. Before I get into tailoring, I should also add that when it comes to the legendary crafting, there are recipe ranks here. Although they don't mean anything, we, if, we, if you take a look at the tooltip here, it pretty much says the same thing. Um, we're not quite sure what's going to happen yet. But anyway, tailoring. So I'm going to go with mostly the things that make tailoring unique. I think I've gone over a lot of like, you know, what ta what most of these uh, armor crafting professions do, uh, how the upgrades work, what the relics of the past mean. Uh, so they can make, okay, those are Zen, that's the Zandalari stuff. Uh, I could have swore I saw bags somewhere. So I see a craftsman's pouch. Uh, this lets you get an extra skill up when crafting. We saw that already. Uh, they can make a, a set of armor. These, of course, can be customized in certain ways. I guess I can go over what kinds of customizations we're looking at, such as these bonus effects. So in this case, this is something that will help you out when you're outdoors. By completing a world quest, it increases your primary stats, although we don't know for how long. We could also reduce falling damage. Not that big of a deal, but, you know, something that's still worth, you know, kind of writing home about. Uh, there are certain buffs that you can get depending on the type of item that you're making. So, for example, these pants, uh, these give you the option to make your well-fed effects last a little bit longer or increase uh, swim speed or probably the favorite one add a socket. And then there is obviously still some, uh, some things that are missing. I recall at some point people were mentioning to me, hey, dude, you can make bags. You should be able to make bags, 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 bags. And I'm not seeing them. I am not seeing bags. I see bandages, but I don't see anything about bags. I have to conclude, at least for now, that there is still no Shadowlands bag available. All right, let's move on to blacksmithing. And the immediate thing I noticed is something that you learn right away is that you can make stones again. 
to increase your auto attack, uh, auto attack damage or weapon damage by a certain amount for one hour, depending on the kind of weapon that you use. This is cool. Things are coming back and we can count on, you know, having to, okay guys, can you like put your stuff back on or uh, re-enchant your stuff, buff back up. Those, that's going to be a cool feeling to have again. And from the looks of it, uh, this, this along with everything else is definitely sellable on the market. As for what makes them uh, feel unique, what do we've got? The reinforced girdle uh, makes their wealth at buff um, uh, persist after a battleground. They can make skeleton keys as usual. They can make shields. Thank goodness. Uh, and of course, you can increase the item level. You can uh, customize the kinds of stats. So we're seeing familiar stuff, uh, as I had said. Oh, there are going to be reagents that, that they can make, including the Shadowgast ingot, which is, I believe, the only legendary ingot um, out of all the different kinds of reagents that the different professions can make. At the moment, because I'm still kind of reacting fresh to this, I don't have a bunch of items on me, I don't quite know if there's going to be like a long cooldown on this, if there is going to be some sort of gating mechanism to slow down the rate of items that come in. And of course, they can make all sorts of different kinds of armor, uh, customize the item level, uh, offer bonuses, things to improve the quality of life, and so on and so forth. And I really gotta say, I like that they're bringing back uh, something that blacksmiths that can continuously make over and over again knowing that something like this is going to have some use for pretty much everybody except for casters of course okay so how about alchemy once again i want to remind folks we're not seeing ranks so we may not be able to get certain things like uh, crafting procs or specializations uh not that we know of yet they may still be coming in but for now it's just not something that we're seeing um, the, the thing to point out, though, again, is that um, these reagents and the requirements, they are not uh, soulbound at all. So you're not going to be stuck with an instance of, oh, I need to have Expulsum in order to make a cauldron. No, you just need to make a spectral flask of power, whatever that is. And how do you make a, how do you make a spectral flask of power? You need uh, what looks like a bunch of ingredients, all of which are tradable in the auction house or tradable between person and person which is which is fantastic and of, and to identify or to uh, verify something that i that we found very early on there are only going to be two kinds of flasks power and stamina so how this is going to affect pricing i mean we're, we're gonna have to uh, ultimately wait and see but at least it is nice that we're going to see a certain kind of consistency among the pricing uh that we're only going to see one kind of i guess power flask uh since this is the, since this is uh designed for throughput and then of course the typical stamina flask the potions similar to battle for azeroth they're a little bit more fun than usual so for example this potion of deadly fixation it's going to apply damage it stacks after it stacks it explodes and does additional damage well and then here we go if you consume this weapon while your weapon is augmented with the shadow core oil the explosion damage is increased by 10 percent and it lasts a certain number of seconds so if we scroll down we can see that here are the oils so here are things that you can apply as a spell caster to enhance your abilities and otherwise enhance your throughput make things a little bit more fun a little bit more interesting and i i buy into this i'm eating this out but of course for all the things that are like new and shiny there are a lot of things that stay the same so you have typical throughput kinds of potions you have ones that give straight stats uh you have ones that give uh that, that give procs um kind of the standard fare it looks like alchemists too are able to make shadow guest ingots by taking certain items and putting them together it's just that the, this particular tooltip isn't being very cooperative and then there's of course the alchemy stone, which you can customize uh, to have an I uh, I'm sorry, a higher item level. We just don't quite know how high this item level is going to go. And uh, to be clear, I'm not very satisfied with the very low item level. 165 being under just dungeon gear feels like kind of a turnoff. It'd be great if the uh, Mark IV crafting mark, if it gave us something, you know, something a little bit closer to heroic item level. Maybe not quite heroic item level, but something that's fairly close. All right, let's move on to jewel crafting, beginning with what you start with as soon as you learn Shadowlands jewel crafting, which isn't very much. Uh, in this case, we're able to make some gems, speed increased by a little bit for every equipped Shadowlands gem, uh, which I believe will won't stack all that high anyway. 
And then we have this versatile jewel duble that will uh, give you 12 versatility. When it comes to the gems, we're looking at a lot of the standard stuff that gives stats, but there's also this revitalizing jewel, which periodically heals 100 health for every Shadowlands gem you have equipped. And maybe that's not a lot, but that's a nice, pretty neat effect. We do have an assortment of necks and rings that max out once again at an item level of 165. Uh, they all have sockets. Hmm, they don't seem to be uh, things that we can customize at all. Uh, here, of course, is the legendary ne necklace and ring. So we are going to see legendaries of like nearly every slot, it looks like, uh, with the exception of weapons. What's a little bit unfortunate is that at the moment, at least from how I'm looking at things, uh, that's it. There is no stat customization, but uh, I can't imagine it to be. Uh, I can't imagine it to be much because, well, for the most part, you are simply crafting the kind of stat that you want. Uh, because all of these seem to have just a single stat, and they also include a socket. So. Not much to complain about for jewel crafting. It's hard to say what their actual takeaway is going to be. So there's this crown of the righteous, which uh, it doesn't quite say what it's going to do. Maybe it's only a cosmetic thing and uh, nothing else. Or maybe gems are simply going to be more utilized a lot more um, when it comes to crafting other items. And somehow I think we already made it to the end of the hall, uh, but not before talking about engineering, the final profession. Um, to start with, there isn't much. It's kind of the usual thing. They're able to make components for, for items, but not necessarily items themselves. They, of course, have their share of belt attachments, which can provide some pretty awesome utility. Uh, they do have these optional reagents. Again, these are the reagents that can be applied to armor crafters uh, to customize your, your character to be great at world quests or crafting or what have you. Uh, there is a typical assortment of, of mines, but otherwise, unfortunately, nothing new, nothing unique. There's no Jeeves that I'm seeing yet. There's this thing that uh, summons a pet, not a big deal. They can create guns, uh, and then they have the, the kind of customization that we've been seeing throughout this video. Um, there are there are scopes for hunters, there are different kinds of parts, and then there are, of course, goggles that, like the other crafting professions, they're able to customize, specify stats, as well as bonus effects like reducing falling damage, completing world quests that increase your primary stats, and flasks lasting longer. Woo! What I still love, though, is that overall these professions are going to be working together to certain degrees. One profession is going to make one thing that's going to be required for another profession to make a certain thing. So let's do some quick um, off the cuff source of takeaways. Uh, one, there's going to be no soulbound reagents that we're seeing across any of the profession items here. Again, with the exception of creating legendaries, although that isn't necessarily crafting. It's just you got to get all these materials together, go to Torghast and then have someone make it for you. Boom, you're done. I do kind of like that there aren't going to be uh, recipe ranks because that was kind of a big pain in the butt having to rep up all for the sake of being able to craft a certain item at the cheapest price possible. At the same time though, it's going it, it might feel like resources are going to be a lot more scarce because we're not going to be able to be more efficient at our crafting. We have to just farm harder. It does kind of suck that so far there is no larger bag for uh, tailors for everyone to use. And I'm still looking around. I'm not seeing archaeology at all. I mean, it, I guess it would be kind of weird. Why would there be like fossils and stuff like in the land of the dead? But I guess that's what Maldraxxus is for. Maybe Maldraxxus will be the only place where there is a meaningful way of doing archaeology because, well, whatever. I, I, I don't know. But anyway, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on professions so far. I'm still really liking how they're shaping up. Uh, there are still some questions that I have, so I guess I do have some additional takeaways, like uh, what's going to be the final item level uh, with those marks? Uh, how high can uh, can it possibly get? Is it going to be comparable to uh, heroic? Is it going to stay the same like how things are right now? And if things do stay the way that they are right now, it, it risks compromising the coolness of professions because you're eventually going to move on. However, 
if if there's too much liberty, like if we can create heroic level items and be able to customize the stats and bonuses and such, that would arguably be better than mythic gear because you're able to customize the way the the way you want things exactly to your specification thanks to uh, these different kinds of reagents. So again, I would love to hear your thoughts in a comment below. Please share them. And otherwise, thanks for coming. I hope that this was fairly informative and a little bit eye-opening. And if it was, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft, and we'll just see you later. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. Mm -hmm.